Black Rock Caverns on Heroic doesn't pose too much of a threat, but there are certain mechanics that you absolutely want to know how to deal with before you go in, because you can easily get one shot. First of all, we're going to cover the boss mechanics and what you need to do, and then we're going to have a look at some of the more deadly trash, because quite honestly, you've got as much chance of dying on the trash as you have some of the bosses. When you enter the instance and walk forward into the first main room, you're going to see Romog Bone Crusher. He's going to be patrolling between the center of the room where there's a big NPC called Raz, out towards the path that you're going to take out of the room. The first thing you're going to want to do is clear the trash all around where the boss patrols. The reason for this is when you pull the boss, the first thing he's going to do is call for help. From where he starts in the center of the room, there is a trash pack directly next to him. When he patrols away make sure you clear this trash pack before pulling the boss when it's safe to engage there's only a couple of mechanics that you really need to worry about on this boss the first one is you'll occasionally see him do quake it will place a dust cloud under each player's feet it does damage over time and then a slightly bigger hit when it expires so just make sure you move out of the cloud when the quake finishes there'll be five ads that spawn now these ads die pretty quick but just mds or tricks or just have your tank pick them up and just cleave them down with the boss the primary mechanic for absolutely everyone is called chains of woe you're all going to get pulled into the boss and you need to nuke the chains of woe the basics of this mechanic is if you don't kill the chains in time he's going to do his next mechanic which is called Skullcracker and outside of tanks that can survive this everybody else is likely to die so the whole point is you get pulled in you nuke the chains of woe down and then you run out before he does his AOE Skullcracker. The range of Skullcracker when it goes off is only 12 yards, so you don't need to worry about getting too far away, but it's better to be safe than sorry. The only other mechanic is really for the healers, and that's a Wounding Strike. The tank will spend a lot of time with 25% heal and reduction on them from Wounding Strike. It's basically Mortal Strike. So just keep your eye on the tank and try not to fall behind on healing, but quite honestly, you shouldn't have any issues. Once the boss is dead, the big NPC called Raz is going to be free, and he's going to run around on a rampage and clear your way to the next hallway on your way to the next boss when you see one of these big guys the only thing to worry about is shadow strike anytime a shadow strikes being cast no matter who you are make sure it gets interrupted from slapping these big ads as well you can get a buff called blood of the evolved now this is only really going to be relevant for rogues feral druids even warriors basically anyone with bleed damage but if you can manage to get a nice 20 stack of one of these before you go on to a boss it can be quite cool. The next boss you're going to face is Caller Herald of Twilight. Quite honestly, some groups make this boss look harder than it is. The boss itself only has one single mechanic that you need to worry about, and that's called Dark Command. Dark Command has got a cast bar and it's interruptible, so you want every single Dark Command to make sure it gets interrupted because it does a small amount of damage and does a fear. The reason this is bad is because of the beams. So you'll notice three beams being channeled down into three adds. From standing facing the boss, you've got left, middle, and right. You need to assign a player to each of these. All the player needs to do is intercept the beam. If you reach 100 stacks that you gain from the beam, you'll turn into a Twilight Zealot, and if one of the adds turn into one, they will as well. The whole point is for you never to reach 100 stacks, but also never letting the adds reach 100 stacks. So the easiest thing to do is assign three players, one to each beam, and then you just stand in the beam and take 75 to 80 stacks, move out, and as soon as your debuff has dropped, move back in. And it is literally rinse and repeat. The tank should be able to handle the interrupts of Dark Command on the boss anyway, Way, so your healer can focus on healing and your free dps can focus on dealing with the beams of course this is made easier if you've got range if you've got melee the best thing to do is actually have your tank or the melee take the beam and stand near the middle one and you could even have left or right handled by a healer basically anyone can do these beams that's confident with moving out at the right time if you use dbm dbm will give you a warning when you've got 80 stacks anyway so as soon as you see that just move out of the beam wait for your stacks to drop and move back in you'll continue to make your way through the instant until you come across Karsh Stillbender. Karsh Stillbender really is a tank and healer fight, although the more DPS you've got, the quicker you can do it, but it really does rely on your tank knowing exactly what he's doing. So the boss is going to start with 99% damage reduction, and you'll see the big stream of lava in the middle of the room. When you move the boss through the lava in the middle, for each second he stands in it, it's going to remove his 99% damage reduction, so he's taking full damage, but for each second he's also going to take 5% extra damage, for 17 seconds. The problem is, while he's stood in there, he's also doing more damage to the tank and doing AoE damage to the entire group. Now, with ridiculously high DPS, you can just stack it straight in the middle, lust, and just nuke it down. But in early levels of gear, it's going to be a lot safer to manage it properly. So take the boss in and get him a few stacks, move him out, 
As the debuff's about to drop off, take him back in, rinse and repeat. The aim of the game as a tank will be to never let the stacks drop, but making sure you're only keeping them in the lava long enough that makes it manageable for your healer. He also does a cleave which you'll have to be mindful of, but quite honestly, it's never going to be an issue. And the only other mechanic that you'll have to deal with will only happen if your tank lets the stacks drop off. When the stacks drop off and he cools down, lava spout is going to happen and basically lava is going to fire out of the grates that you can see on the floor. When this happens, you're also going to get bound flame adds that come in. They'll just need to be cleaved down with a boss. But ultimately, as long as your tank is never letting the superheated armor drop off, there is no other mechanics to worry about. The hallway now to get to the next boss can be particularly tricky. First of all, you've got these elementals. They don't do a great deal as long as you're handling the one mechanic that can be deadly. They basically cool down a meteorite that splits the damage between all the players it hits. So whenever you see these elementals, you all want to be stacked with the tank. And then the Twilight adds, you have Twilight Wardens, Twilight Flame Callers, and Twilight Obsidian Borers. If you want to play it safe, you can line a site to get these all stacked up, but quite honestly, as long as you've got people that can interrupt, you're perfectly fine just to run straight into them. Unfortunately, these adds synergize together particularly well. The things you need to look out for is Shadow Prism. If you've got Shadow Prism on you, every time you move, you take damage. This can be dispelled and really should be dispelled as a priority because people will move and die to this. And the reason I say that is because of what the Twilight Wardens do, which is Frost Bomb. So they put a Frost Bomb on the floor, which you naturally want to move out of. But if you're trying to move out of a Frost Bomb while you've got Shadow Prison, you're probably going to take more damage from the moving with Shadow Prison than you would if you stood in the Frost Bomb. The only other thing really to worry about is Boar. So the Twilight Obsidian Borers will just channel Boar on a target which reduces their armor and does some damage honestly it's a really long channel again just make sure they're being interrupted but once you've got them all stacked up they're going to get cleaved down particularly quick anyway which will then bring you to beauty now the one thing you want to make sure you do is clear all the trash outside of the cave entrance to beauty this is because she fears and charges and knocks you around and you don't want to be pulling an extra trash pack whilst you're fighting the boss there's a second reason you're going to want to do this and it's because you're going to pull the boss back towards the entrance anyway so there's less chance of cc's being broken now if you're really light on cc's you're going to have to deal with her ads so you're going to have two little mini core hound pups these can be rooted hibernated polymorphed trapped there is so many ways to handle these but obviously depending on what your comp is depends on how you're going to handle these Ultimately, the easiest way is to have two people or just a single druid that can handle both keep them CC'd throughout the entire fight. So you'll CC them in position before you even pull the boss, then pull the boss back towards the entrance, and now you've just got some annoying mechanics that she does, but there's no real way to avoid them. She does a terrifying roar, which is just a mass fear. Of course, like all fears, if you've got things like tremor totems or fear immunities, you want to use them. She also does a berserker charge that just charges at the furthest person. Now, once you've been feared, who that's going to be on is going to be very difficult to control. And unfortunately, if you're thinking, well, will just stack next to the boss and no one will ever get charged well then she actually does a flame break as well which does an aoe fire damage and knockback to everyone within 12 yards so the best way to approach the boss is just to be loosely spread making sure that the people that are cc in the ads are actually in range of them at all times and then it does largely feel like a more annoying tank and spank fight now if you haven't got enough cc to cc both dogs obviously you're going to want to kill those before you kill the boss if you've got a single cc make sure you cc one ad kill one ad then kill the boss if you are allowing the dogs to run around they will put lava pools on the floor as well which you'll have to move away from which leads us nicely onto the last boss which is ascendant lord obsidious don't panic when you look at the boss and think wow look at the amount of ads there are there your good old friend raz is going to jump down and smash the majority of them very very soon quite honestly this boss is really simple you're going to have the boss and you're going to have three ads the three ads you don't need to worry about whatsoever they don't have a regular fret table either they only hit the last person that hit them but they do stack up a healing reduction buff all the way up until a hundred percent healing reduction now because of what little damage these appear to be doing at the moment the best way to handle this is just to have your tank pick up the boss keep chucking the odd aoe down so he's got the ads on him as well and if for some reason the healing reduction starting to get a little bit too much then just have a ranged dps chuck some aoe down to take the ads off of the tank long enough for the debuff to drop so he can get some healing as soon as he's healed up and healthy again the tank can then get them all back it's a very difficult one to talk about as a final boss in a heroic because 
because it is actually probably one of the easiest ones in here. Occasionally, he'll do transformation, where he'll basically change positions completely with one of his clones that are running around, so as the tank just be ready to switch, and as the DPS also be ready to switch target. There's Twilight Corruption that goes out that can be dispelled, but quite honestly, the damage it does is so low, whether you want to dispel it or heal through it is just entirely up to you, and ultimately, just rinse and repeat until the boss dies. If for some reason your tank is very undergeared or struggling to actually stay alive with all the adds on him, it is very easy to have something like a Hunter just kite all three adds almost indefinitely. But overall, I would say that's all the bosses, that's all you need to understand for all the bosses and any deadly trash that you need to keep an eye out for i will be putting guides out like this for all the heroic dungeons and all the heroic raids so be sure to smash that subscribe button like the video if you liked it and i'll see you on the next one